In this video, I'll demonstrate how to set up a typical enzyme kinetics protocol. There are many different types of enzyme kinetic assays, so your specific calculations may not match these exactly, however the features demonstrated here can be customized to suit your needs. Typically, an enzyme kinetics assay is used to determine the rate of an enzymatic reaction. This can be accomplished by observing the appearance or disappearance of a substrate over time. Usually these assays are read using a colorimeter, a photometer, or a fluorometer. Often the data analysis for an enzyme kinetics assay will include a kinetic reduction followed by a curve fitting. The kinetic reduction computes an endpoint value for each kinetics plot. This could include calculating a slope, the area under the curve, or the total of measurement values. The curve fitting portion of the assay plots the endpoint values calculated by the kinetic reduction against the known concentrations or doses. This can be used to calculate the concentrations or doses of unknowns, or you can use the curve fit to report characteristics of the curve. The available XY reduction transforms in my assay's desktop are XY reduction average, fit parameter, maximum slope, peak from fit, peak point, total, x at y, x between y, and y at x. The xy reduction fit parameter will perform a specified curve fit on each xy plot and will show the specified parameter as the result. For example, you could use a linear regression fit method and report the m parameter to report the calculated slope. The xy reduction total transform calculates the sum of all y values for each xy plot. Any of these transforms can be used to create endpoint data that can then be used in further calculations. The most commonly used for enzyme kinetics are slope and total, but if you're unsure which to use, you can easily try different methods. I have a set of enzyme kinetic data with time points formatted for my assays. You'll notice this format shows the positions in the first column with each of the corresponding time points and measurements listed in the subsequent columns. My assays offers import compatibility with many proprietary reader export formats, but if your data is in a different format, we're happy to create a tool to update the formatting for you. Within the My Assays Desktop Explorer, I'll create a new protocol using the new protocol wizard. I'll select the I will enter or paste in my data option. Next, we can select what type of data we will be analyzing. I'll select kinetic with time values and the detection technology is absorbance. Here we can specify our data format, and in the case of my assay, I'll select the 12 by 8 96 well microplate. Now I'll select the sample types used in my assay, which are standard and blank. And on the next step, I'll select my plate layout. You can choose from one of these existing layouts, edit a layout, or create a new one. If you select to edit or create a layout, the Plate Layout Editor will open. For more information on how to use the Plate Layout Editor, please see the associated video. I'll select the layout that has seven standards and one blank. In this example, I'm not measuring unknowns and I'm only interested in the characteristics of the curve created using my standards. Next, we can copy and paste in our data And on the next screen, name our protocol and optionally provide a description. Finally, we can review our protocol configuration and press Finish to save and launch the protocol. Once the protocol has launched, we can begin adding transforms to complete our data analysis. My assay has read once a minute for 10 cycles, the first time being time zero and the 10th at the nine minute mark. We'll need to perform a blank correction, calculate the slope of each plot, and the total of the points. I'd also like to calculate the Km and V max. To begin adding these steps, I'll open the Properties control and start on the Transforms tab. The first step for my data analysis will be to add a blank correction transform. I'll click Add and select XY Blank Correction. There are several different ways a blank or background correction step can be performed. You can perform a blank correction using a single blank, a one-to-one -one blank correction, 
which corrects each sample using its associated blank, or you can perform a blank correction by row, which corrects all samples in a row with the corresponding blank. In my case, I have a single blank for the plate, so I'll click Create, set the blank type to blank, and the blank group to 1. Next, to calculate the slope, I'll add an XY reduction fit parameter transform. This transform will report the specified parameter from the selected fit method. I'd like to fit a linear regression to my data, and in the Y equals MX plus B linear regression equation, M is equal to the slope. So for the parameter, I'll enter M and rename this output matrix to slope. Next, to calculate the total of the data points, I'll add the XY reduction total transform. This transform will calculate the sum of the data points for each plot. Finally, I'll add the standard curve fit transform. I'd like to use the total matrix we just created using the XY reduction total transform as my input matrix. The easiest way to calculate the KM and Vmax is to use a Michaelis Minton curve fit. I'll set the fit method to Michaelis Minton and add the standard concentrations that correspond to my assay. In this case, I'll use the series mode, setting the first standard to 1 and the series to multiply by 2. Let's calculate our data. On our report, you can see four tabs here at the top of the page. The Report tab, the XY Reduction Fit Parameter tab, the XY Reduction Total tab, and the Standard Curve Fit tab. Starting on our Report tab, you can see a sample table that shows the sample IDs, positions, the raw thumb plot, and the blank corrected thumb plot, the calculated slope, the total, and the concentration calculated from the standard curve fit. Below the sample table, you'll see the standard curve fit, as well as the corresponding details, like limits of quantification, coefficients, and goodness measures. You'll also see the curve data table that shows the calibrators and their associated information. The standards that have acceptable percent CV and accuracy results, as defined using the quantification limits in the standard curve fit transform, will be highlighted in green, and those that do not will be highlighted in red. On the XY Reduction Fit Parameter tab, you can see the input is the blank corrected data and the linear regression fit line for each position, as well as the fit details below. You'll notice the x-axis is showing the time in seconds. But if I'd like to display this axis in minutes, I can just make that selection from the drop-down box. I can view the different positions by selecting their checkbox on the right. On the XY Reduction Total tab, we can again see the input data and the total calculated below. To exclude data, we can drag these blue lines. Finally, on the Standard Curve Fit tab, we can see the interactive curve chart for our standard curve fit. If our curve had any outliers, we could just left-click on them to remove them from the analysis. I'd like to make a couple of changes to simplify the information appearing on my Report tab. In my sample table, I don't want to see the concentration column. In my assay, the slope corresponds to the initial rate of reaction, and the total column can be used in a separate equation to approximate bioavailability. The concentration column is unnecessary because I'm using the Michaelis Minton fit to calculate the Km and Vmax, not necessarily to obtain concentration results. To make that change, I'll again open the Properties control, click on Matrices, and under the Concentration Matrix, I'll deselect Include in Sample Tables. I'd also like to split up my report elements into two separate sheets, with the sample table on one sheet and the fit results on another sheet. So under Properties, Report, I'll click on the Sample Table 1 report element and add the sheet name, Results. And for the Transform Content Standard Curve Fit 1 report element, I'll add the sheet name, Fit. I'd also like to make an advanced configuration change to show the Vmax and Km on the results sheet. 
These parameters are an important part of my assay, and I'd also like to have them displayed directly below my sample table. To make this change, I'll open the XML tab and scroll down to the report element. The coefficients table shows these parameters, so I'll enter a sheet name attribute and enter results. I'll apply these changes and let's recalculate. Now on our report, you'll see two sheets, a result sheet and a fit sheet. On the result sheet, we can see our simplified sample table as well as our Vmax and Km. The fit sheet contains the results of our standard curve fit and its details. You'll recall that my assay contains two different reduction transforms, the slope and total transforms. I've calculated these results using the total transform as the input for my standard curve fit, but I could easily have used the slope. To make that change, I can open the properties control and on the transforms tab, for the standard curve fit, I can use this drop-down box to select the slope matrix as opposed to the total matrix for the input. Once I've made that change, I'll also change the name of the y-axis from total to slope. Let's recalculate. Now on our report, you can see that the results have been calculated using the slope instead of the total. Using the features available in MyAssays desktop, we've successfully created and configured a protocol to analyze and report the desired results for my enzyme kinetics assay. For additional information on analyzing your kinetic data and configuring your report, please see the associated videos. If you have any questions about this functionality, please email us at support at myassays.com.